was the edge of midnight in downtown Chicago at the Golden Point Club. Monday had been quiet, almost too quiet. All evening, just two of the 12 private rooms had been occupied for head-to-head -head play with the shapely receptionist, Macy Lewis, up in front. The action in Parlor 3 between private eye Johnny Riddell and Chad Riley had just finished. Although Riley had gone home, Riddell had remained behind to review a position. A gunshot episode. <laughs> Each parlor door had a locking mechanism controlled by Miss Lewis, so players could, couldn't be surprised by a police raid. Riddell attempted to leave his room, but the door was locked. Why? He called for Macy to buzz him in. Where was she? Two minutes later, she screamed, and Johnny broke down his door. He dashed down the hall. The parlor 12 door was open. In the center of the well-appointed room was an old mahogany backgammon table and two leather armchairs, one of which had been knocked over on the side. Not four feet from the table was Macy standing over Judge Hamilton Rice. He lay still, as still as death, sprawling grotesquely on the richly carpeted floor. In his back was an exit wound just below the left shoulder. The beige carpet was slowly turning crimson. Johnny visually examined the judge, whose left hand clutched a dice cup. The dice had fallen out of the shaker with 4-1 facing upwards. The fingers of his right hand were curled around a small piece of paper. His arm was extended almost as if he were handing the paper to Johnny. Judge Rice was a close friend. This matter had to be handled discreetly without immediate police involvement. Riddell took the paper out of his cold hand. Ladies and gentlemen, here are Greg Tomlin and Amy Trudeau co-starring Bob Zaverall as the dead body in the case <laughs> of the deadly roll. Not go test it. Give him a minute, give him a minute. <laughs>
Now, if that's rule 3-3, three, three, like the note says, then why are the dice on the floor over here instead of up on the board? Give it up, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that piece of paper you're using to pad that rather amply filled bra you got there. <laughs> or maybe I should go in after it. You wouldn't, Dave. Oh, just watch me. Let's <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> You'd better start talking, baby, or you're going to be up the river without a paddle. Okay, it wasn't supposed to happen like this. Judge Rice was old. His skin was weak. Teddy said he could beat him like a drum. So I sweet talked the judge and claimed for a hundred of points. And let him the money. He was going to leave his wife to take him by the power of winning. Uh huh, but in reality, the dice are torturing him. He's down 61 on the score sheet. In this position, the judge is holding a 32 cube. Teddy's got to have a three to have any kind of chance to turn this around. And he won the three. Uh-huh. TQ rolled a three-six. Whoa. <laughs> the only three that doesn't hit. Yep. Forces him to come in on the six point. Break in the outfield. He leaves three blocks. If I'm not mistaken, the judge hits with every roll. I'm sure there are a ton of gambits. And it was crushed. Hmm. And the judge says, Poor little Theodore, even when he hit, you missed. Eight to be last, that. Here's when he pulled the trigger. I was down the hall and he motioned for me to lock your door. And they came up front and told me what happened. Said they looked here and they covered. So I went back in the room, pulled their own hands to try and create confusion. And then we have such a nice life together, such a nice life. Yeah, we'll still have a nice life. How's that? Nice life sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Operator, give me the police. <laughs> How about another round of a hand?